In this segment, we talk about ways to visit all the vertices of a binary tree. Our main focus will be what is called an in-order traversal of the tree. An in-order traversal on a binary search tree will visit the keys in sorted order from smallest to largest. This is another way you can implement a sorting algorithm. Insert all the keys to be sorted into a binary search tree, and then do an in-order traversal on the tree to output the keys in sorted order. Let's say that we want to print out all the keys of our BST in sorted order from smallest to largest. How can we do this? Again, let's think about an algorithm that begins at the root. This is always our natural starting point in working with BSTs because in our BST class, we store a pointer to the root node. In the picture here, the root has key seven. All the keys that are less than seven in the BST are in the subtree of the left child of the root. Thus, to print out the keys in order from smallest to largest, in particular, we want to print out all the keys in the subtree of the left child of the root before we print out the root. Once we print out all the keys in the left subchild, then we want to print out the key of the root, and finally, print out the keys in the subtree of the right child of the root. This suggests a recursive procedure to print out the keys of the BST in order. Here is code to recursively implement an in-order traversal of a BST that follows the outline we just gave. We initially call this function with a pointer to the root node. You see that, assuming the root is not the null pointer, we then call the print function on the left subtree of the root node in the third line of the function. When this recursive call terminates, we will have printed out all the keys in the left subtree in order. So the next key we should print out in sorted order is the key of the root node itself. And this is done in the fourth line of the function. Finally, we call print on the right subtree of the root node to again recursively print out all keys of the right subtree in sorted order. Let's look at this with an example. I've given names to to pointers to nodes in the left half of the tree here so that we can talk about arguments to the calls of print. So A points to the node with key value 3, B points to the node with key value 1, and C points to the node with key value 5. Initially, we call print with the root. So there's the call to print with the root. Now let's execute the code of print on the root. The root is not a null pointer, so we then call print with a pointer to the left child of the root. So we call print of A. Now we enter the execution of print on argument A. So we again evaluate the if statement. A is not the null pointer. So now we call print with argument B, because B points to the left child of A. So there's the call to print of B. In the call to print with B, we execute the if statement. B is not the null pointer. So we again call print on B arrow left. Now, this is a null pointer. So now something different finally happens. We have reached the base case of our recursion and the call to print with null pointer returns. So now we are back in the call to print with argument B. And in our execution of this function, we have moved to the C outline where the arrow is pointing. We execute this line and print out the key one because B points to a node which has key one. Our program then advances to the next line in this call to print with B. So we call print with B pointing to right, which again calls print on a null pointer. So this call to print with the null pointer returns, 
we're back to the call to print with B. And now we have executed all the lines of print in the call to B as well. So this also returns. And now we are back to print in the call with A. And now we are at the line in the call to print with A where the red arrow is. So now we're going to print out uh, the key three, which is the key of the node that A points to. And we're going to advance in this code of print with the uh, argument A to the last line, print node pointing to right. And this is going to call print of C. OK, I'm going to speed up now. So as C points to a leaf, where both the left and right pointers are null pointers, the call to print of C will just print out the key five and terminate. We now return to the call of print of A, and we are now done executing all the lines of print in the call with argument A as well. So now we are back to the call of print with the root. We are at the call of print with the root on the line where the red arrow is pointing. So now we print out the key associated with the root and we advance to the next line. Okay, so I hope you get the idea of how this works. I'm going to stop here and not go through all the calls to print in the right subtree of the root. Let me also mention that you can use an order traversal to do things other than just print out keys. You can substitute the C outline with whatever processing you need to do on a node. Again, the situation where you would want to apply an order traversal is when you need to process all the keys in the left subtree of a node before processing the key at the node, and then where you want to process all the keys in the node's right subtree. When there are n keys in the binary search tree, the complexity of n-order traversal is theta of n. We visit every node in the tree, so we must take time at least n. Now, if we let t of n be the time taken by a call to print on the root of a tree with n vertices, then we see that in the body of print, we spend constant time to evaluate the if statement and constant time to do the C out. If there are K many nodes in the left subtree, then the call to print with the node pointing to left takes time T of K. Finally, there must be N minus K minus one nodes left in the right subtree. So the call to print with node pointing to right takes time t of n minus k minus 1. Thus, overall, we can upper bound t of n by t of k plus t of n minus k minus 1 plus order 1. Now, to see how to evaluate this recursion, let's first just simplify the constants in the formula and suppose that the order 1 term is just 1. And suppose that we also know that t of 1 is equal to 1, whereas in reality, we just know that t of 1 is, is constant. So with these simplifications, then you can directly verify that t of n equals n satisfies the recurrence. In the general case, where we have an order 1 term, you can still see by direct substitution that a linear function, that is a function of the form t of n is equal to a constant times n, satisfies the recurrence. So this gives a linear upper bound on the running time of n order traversal. Just by changing the relative order of processing a node and the recursive calls to its left and right subtrees, we arrive at two other methods to traverse a tree which are called pre-order traversal and post-order traversal. In pre-order traversal, we first process a node before recursively visiting its left subtree and then its right subtree. 
and post-order traversal, we wait until after both recursive calls on the left and right subtrees before processing a node. So in this example tree, I've given the order in which we would print out the nodes when doing a pre-order and post-order traversal of it. I will let you think about that and, and see why that's the correct ordering. Both pre- and post-order traversals have interesting applications, both in the context of binary search trees and trees more generally. I'm just going to mention one application here, which will be needed in your programming assignment. The application that I want to talk about is to the destructor of a binary search tree. When we are done with the binary search tree, we need to free all the memory we have allocated for the nodes of the tree. But we have to be careful about the order in which we delete these nodes. For example, if we delete node 13 and we haven't saved in temporary variables pointers to its children, then after deleting node 13, we have no way to access its children in order to delete them. Then this would lead to a memory leak. So the question is, what kind of tree traversal should we use to delete the nodes of a binary search tree? Okay, I will leave this to you as a puzzle to think about. 